Hello, Tendies, Friendies. Welcome back to Tendies Club. Great to see you. Got a great show for you. Got a really, really delicious, great show for you. We've been talking about the fails to deliver and the shorts abusively attacking in an illegal way in a coordinated attacks. And we showed how Overstock made them pay uh, 40 times. They made them pay, they went 40X, they made them pay. Overstock has been battling these people for a long time. And Goldman Sachs, lawyers for Goldman Sachs, made a giant error in court documents fighting over stock, and we got a glimpse into their disgusting, awful, illegal stuff. And it's the and, and it's amazing. It's really, really, really amazing. So let's dive right into it. Thanks for being here. So I'm not an investment advisor. I'm not a tax advisor. This is not investment advice. It's not tax advice. This is Tendies Club. Uh, please uh, chat a lot, chat a lot down here and over here. Chat a lot and have a lot of fun and leave a lot of comments and have a lot of fun. And please subscribe to the channel. Hit subscribe and hit the bell and get all the stuff. And uh, tell all your friends and like the video, please, and share the video. Let's do it. So this is really great stuff we got. So Patrick Byrne, I didn't know who this guy was. There's, I want to get this guy on the show. This is I'm going to like try hard to get this guy on the show now. This guy is very interesting. Very interesting. So Patrick Byrne is the guy that founded Overstock. He's going to lead us into this story here. So Patrick Byrne is an American businessman. In 1999, Byrne founded Overstock after leading some other small companies. CEO took it, uh, took it public. A uh, lot of public attention for a long-running legal battle against short sellers and naked short selling. Okay. So this is uh, Mr. Byrne speaking. The first time I heard Joe Florin speak, I was standing behind him in an elevator in his law firm San Francisco office tower as another lawyer informed him that the subpoena Joe Florin had served the previous day on a colleague of mine had reached her in the hospital after a difficult delivery of her first child while she was breastfeeding for the first time. Gleefully, Joe Florin replied, really? That's beautiful. I love it. Joe Florin is a lawyer at Morgan Lewis, the white shoe law firm defending Goldman Sachs against Overstock's prime broker litigation. In filing Goldman's response to Overstock's motion to vacate the trial court's judge's decision to stay his own decision to unseal various documents related to this litigation. So Overstock filed something. Goldman had to file something back uh, in response. And they, Overstock redacted, or Overstock didn't do anything wrong. Goldman, in their response, did an unredacted document. So he filed something containing an attachment he forgot to redact. He was too busy being the worst person he could possibly be. That attachment is a previous filing of Overstock's, a filing which contains but a sample of the shenanigans at Goldman and Merrill that has turned up over the course of five years and millions of pages of discovery, but which filing we had redacted when we made it. As good as when we, a, a filing which we had redacted when we made it, as good litigants do. The moron for Goldman Sachs, Joe Florin, was too busy being the worst person he could possibly be and forgot to redact it. He was too busy. Okay, and now we have an article from Rolling Stone. Uh, Taibi is this guy's name. This guy was just on Rogan. Somebody told me to get this guy on the show. If I can get this guy on the show, anybody that's on Rogan, of course, I'd, I'd, that would blow the show up. So, of course, that would be great to get this guy on the show. And so let's take a look at this. We also then have Bloomberg talking about the same thing. This was possibly the biggest screw-up in Wall Street legal history. This was a big, a big boner by a big jerk that deserved it. All right. Through the magic of this unredacted document, the public will be able to see for the for itself what the bank's attitudes are not just toward the not just not what the what the bank's attitudes are, not just toward the mythical practice of naked short selling. Remember, we said that the, the, uh, they live and they have to create their own reality and not operate in reality at all and dismiss people that talk about reality as dangerous wackos. So they, the, the whole attitude on Wall Street about naked short selling and abusive short selling is that it doesn't exist. And people that talk about it are conspiracy theorists. So this mythical practice of naked short selling, hint, they volubly confess to the activity in writing, in emails, but also these attitudes toward regulations and laws in general. F the compliance area. Procedures, smeecedures, chirps Peter Mells, Peter Mells, former president, former president of Merrill Lynch Professional Clearing Corps. F the compliance area, says the president of Merrill Lynch Professional Clearing Corp. 
when a subordinate worries about the company failing to comply with the rules governing short sales. And he's so smart, he put it in an email. We also find out uh, here how Wall Street professionals manipulated public opinion by buying off or intimidating experts in their respective fields. But first, first, there's Peter Mills. <laughs> Let's, that's Peter Mills. He is now working for the fine institution that is Cantor Fitzgerald, CF Secured Cantor Fitzgerald. Connect. So make a connection with him. Cantor Fitzgerald, what's that? Cantor Fitzgerald has commitment to client-centered innovation. So don't worry about Cantor Fitzgerald. They're, I'm sure they're on the up and up. The president of Merrill Lynch Professional Clearing Corps says F the compliance area in writing. And he's and now he's working <laughs> for Cantor Fitzgerald. Okay. Let me keep that right there. We also find out here how Wall Street professionals manipulated public opinion by buying off and or intimidating experts in their respective fields. Of course we do. There are even more troubling passages, some of which raise a few eyebrows in light of former Goldman executive Greg Smith's recent public resignation, in which he complained the firm routinely screwed its own clients and denigrated them calling them Muppets, amongst other things. Let's look at what Greg said. So Greg did an op-ed in the New York Times. This is, this is a few years later. So this, uh, this release was like 2007. In like 20, 2014 or so, Greg Smith resigns and says, today's my last day, at, and, and he publishes this in New York Times op-ed, says, today's my last day at Goldman after almost 12 years at the firm, uh, first, as an intern, I believe I've worked here long enough to understand the trajectory of its culture, its people, and its identity. I can honestly say the environment now is as toxic and destructive as I've ever seen it. Greg's open letter has created quite a stir in the investment banking industry. Quote, sales meetings where not one single minute is spent asking questions about how we can help clients. It's purely about how we can make the most money possible off them. It makes me ill how callously people talk about ripping their clients off. This is what I'm saying about the hedge funds. They don't care. They'll rip their clients off as a rule. So they, they don't, they'll, 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 like the, the end date of the end of the year, the end of the month, the end of the quarter, where they can screw their clients and, and push the, even if the, they don't care if the, if the security then moves against them, that's the clients take the loss the next quarter. And then, and then in, at Goldman Sachs investment banking, just more of the same. Same, that's the culture. Uh, of the, it's not all Wall Street culture, but this culture of Wall Street and it's a culture of, they feel like they're above the law for sure. After a Merrill executive expressed concern that a colleague intentionally failed or didn't complete a short sale, an executive at the clearing unit responded with an expletive telling the executive to ignore, quote, the compliance area. Okay, procedures just meet, just meet your same thing. Oh, wait, I have to, sorry, I, I, I gotta go back up. Okay, so there's Greg Smith. And then, uh, and then there's an exhibit which refers to an email from Goldman executive John Masterson that sends non-public data concerning customer short positions in Overstock and four other hard-to-borrow stocks to Maverick Capital, a large hen fund that, st that short stocks. There's, the, uh, the people at Goldman are giving a separate hedge fund information about their clients. It's supposed to be private information. They don't care about their clients at all. They don't care about anybody. When I contacted Goldman, Goldman went back to its own thing. Among other services, well, okay, this is a different thing. We'll get another quote from Goldman later. So they contacted Goldman and Goldman admitted to it. So among other services it provides, securities lending at Goldman provides market color information to clients. So it provides market color information. Mr. Masterson provided a client with certain aggregate information regarding short balances and services. Yes, so yes, we did. And they probably do it. And again, this was this, this only, we only saw this by accident. This was not like, uh, the Department of Justice said, "This is go, this is so bad. We're gonna we're gonna come down on you." This was we just got a quick glimpse into this accidentally. Among the more compelling is the specter of executives from numerous companies admitting openly to engaging in naked short selling, a practice that again was often dismissed as mythical or unimportant. That's the game plan. They dis they do terrible things and say the other side does terrible things. They do dangerous things, say the other side does dangerous things. 
they they do awful stuff and say the other side is dangerous uh, conspiracy theorists. Sometimes it's not easy to find those shares to borrow. Okay, so the, we have the naked, abusive, naked short selling without with the fails to deliver. So sometimes it's not easy to find those shares to borrow. Sometimes the shares are controlled by investors who might have no interest in lending them out. Sometimes there's such scarcity of borrowable shares that banks and brokers like Goldman have to pay a fee just to borrow the stock. These hard to borrow stocks, stocks that cost money to borrow, are called negative rebate stocks. In some cases, these negative rebate stocks cost so much just to borrow that a short seller would need to see a real price drop of 35% in the stock just to break even. So how do you short a stock when you can't find shares to borrow? Well, one solution is you don't even bother to borrow them. And then when the trade is done, you don't bother to deliver them. You just do the trade anyway without physically locating the stock. Thus, in this document, we have another former Merrill Pro, Thomas Trangfaglia, saying in 2005, we are not borrowing negatives. I've made clear from the beginning. Why would we want to borrow them? We want to fail them. They're planning ahead to do fails to deliver. It's as illegal as it can be. Trafagli, in other words, didn't want to bother paying the high cost of borrowing negative rebate stocks. Instead, he preferred to sell the stocks he didn't actually possess. That is what is meant by we don't want to fail them, Traf or we want to fail them. Trafalia was talking about creating fails or failed trades, failed to delivers, which was what happens when you don't actually locate and borrow the stock within the time that law allows for trades to be settled. So this was happening incredibly in overstock. They got to over 100% shorted. So in other words, 107% of all overstock shares available for trade, uh, for trade were short, a physical impossibility, unless someone was somehow creating artificial supply in the stock. Goldman clearly knew there was a discrepancy between what it was telling regulators and what it was actually doing. We have to be careful not to link locates to fails because we've told the regulators we can't, one executive is quoted as saying. We have to be careful not to link locates to fails because we've told the regulators we can't. One executive uh, is quoted as saying in an email, they put that in an email and we accidentally saw it. What are they doing? Like this, is, we, we got one quick little glimpse and this is what we saw documented. These companies were using obscure loopholes and regulations that allowed them to short companies by trading in shadows or echoes of real shares in their stock. They manipulated rules to avoid having to disclose these failed trades to regulators. The import of this is that it is made cheaper and easier to bet down the value of a stock while simultaneously devaluing the same stock by adding fake supply. This makes it easier to make money by destroying value. This makes it easier to make money by destroying value. And is another example of how the over-financialization of the economy makes real job-creating growth more difficult. This, so there, this, the people at Cassava Scientists, the people at Overstock, the people at the actual companies doing things are actually just creating value. And these people are just destroying and, and making it hard for them to bring drugs, intentionally making it hard for them to bring life-saving drugs to market. It's how they make a living. And then they laugh about it. And they don't even need the money in the first place. In any case, this document all by itself shows numerous executives from companies like Goldman Sachs Execution and Clearing and Merrill Pro talking about a conscious strategy of failing trades. In other words, not bothering to locate, borrow, and deliver stock within the time allotted for legal settlement. For instance, in one email, Goldman Sachs tells a client, Wolverine Trading, we'll let you fail. We'll let you fail. Oh, by the way, Thomas Trafalia. <laughs> there he is. So he was president, Merrill Lynch Professional Clearing. And now he's at Jane Street. Connect. All right. And then Jane Street. Jane Street works differently as a liquidity provider and market maker. So they don't say anything about it. These are market makers doing the, I, I, my guess is Jane Street is up to horrible stuff now is what I think. There, here's a market maker hiring a criminal that just is willing to say in emails, let's do this. And there's Wolverine Trading. They are still uh, around as well, but not to worry because they, they fo have focused on integrity. So, <laughs> 
<laughs> not to worry. Okay, so Goldman sells Wolverine trading. We'll let you fail. We'll let you do fails to deliver. That's fine. You don't have to locate. In front. No problem. We'll help you with that. More damning is an email from Goldman Sachs hedge fund client who remarked that when wanting this short and impossible name, so when you see when you see hard to locate, okay, at least they can't short it anymore. Or if you were like if the retail trader, they has to go through loops to not have their shares available to short. Then you say, well, at least I get paid for that. Nah, they're not paying you either. And then you're like, well, at least I would get paid handsomely for that. No, you're not going to be paid at all. They're because you uh, are allowing them to short your shares, they're illegally driving it down and not paying you for it. More damning is an email from Goldman Sachs telling a hedge fund who remarked when wanting to short an impossible name and fully expecting not to be able to, to short it because you can't locate it. He would then be shocked, shocked to learn that Goldman representative could get it for us. Meaning when an experienced hedge funder wanted to trade a very hard to find stock, he was continually surprised to find that Goldman magically could locate the stock. Obviously, it's not hard to locate a stock if you're just saying you located it without really doing it. So Taibi here contacted Goldman about this story and they couldn't resist using their usual PR playbook. Just say the other side is crazy. Say this, blame the other side. So uh, Overstock, in this particular case, Remember, Overstock battled for another dozen years, another 15 years, then finally took justice in their own hands and blew out the shorts with that preferred one for 10 on the blockchain dividend. They battled them for 15 years. They lost this one on a technicality. But, and, so, and so Goldman said, ha, 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 you're just wackos. And you, that's why you lost in court. Overstock pursued the lawsuit as part of a long-standing jihad designed to distract attention from its own failure. Where, but you know what? Overstock rebounded and it was good, whereas Goldman needed hundreds of billions in emergency funding. I can't believe they weren't allowed to fail. I can't believe the people are still there. All right, and then here's Bloomberg adding some good color. After a Merrill executive expressed concern that a colleague intentionally failed or didn't complete a short sale, an executive at the clearing unit responded with an expletive telling the executive to ignore the compliance area procedures procedures. Overstock lawyer said in the filing, citing an expert from the email. The, and then so here, here's the part I wanted the part added on. The Merrill executive later told a judge the statement was a joke. They were joking. Overstock said, in a, <laughs> they said it, they were joking. They don't really do this. It's not real. It's just a joke. It's fake. It's a joke. It's all a joke. According to the Overstock filing, Wolverine Trading, the Goldman Sachs Clearing Unit's largest client, was told in an undated email that we will let you fail. You don't got to locate those shares. In response to an inquiry uh, whether there was an effort at cleaning up the fails. Now nah, we'll let you fail. An email sent by John Masterson included that non-public data concerning customer short position. A spokesman for Maverick said the company hasn't been able to locate the email. Darn. <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, this is totally unacceptable. We are failing when we have an over a million shares of stock available, another Merrill executive said in an email. If there is a blanket agreement that we are allow every market maker client to continue failing, even if there's enough availability, is there, is, is there, a, is there a blanket agreement that we allow every market maker client to continue failing if there is enough availability, the executive asked in an email. There needs to be some assessment done here and fails cleaned up regardless of who is causing them. The vast majority of Merrill's fails to deliver in overstock shares correspond to market makers Scott Arnestein and Stephen Hazen, overstock's lawyers said in the filing. Goldman Sachs purchased, okay, so here, this is interesting. So now we get into some interesting technicalities of how this stuff might work. This was new to me. Goldman Sachs purchased conversion trades or naked short sales, according to overstock, both, uh, from, both, from both of those guys. In its filing, Overstock's lawyers said conversions involved the purchase of a stock uh, from a counterparty who sold short combined with options to hedge risk. An undated Goldman email cited in the filing refers to Arnestein and his company SBA Trading as providing, providing very aggressive liquidity to Goldman in the form of conversion trades with Goldman Sachs Securities Lending Group. So those options to hedge, we knew that was a possibility. It looks like that is being done. And then this is important too. Remember we saw that CNBC was in the bag with the shorts. 
that the Washington Post and the Philadelphia Inquirer and the Seattle Times as well, and another one as well. But not everybody. Bloomberg, the New York Times, Winter Media, and The Economist intervened in this case, uh, in the Overstock case. Uh, going, so they, they wanted to expose Goldman and Merrill. So C- you're not going to find CNBC doing that. And I, I'm shocked the New York Times did. I don't know if they're if how, how in the bag they are these days. But Bloomberg, The Economist, Winter Media, here could be some allies. Goldman Sachs and Bank of America persuaded a judge to dismiss Overstock's lawsuit because the complaint happened in, in California. So that's why they lost that particular. Just a, a, it's not like it's not that this stuff isn't illegal. They just keep its technicalities left and right. You got a, the Goldman Sachs lawyers. I guess they know what they're doing. They can't file an unredacted document. Option market makers at the time the emails were sent had an exception to trading rules required that borrow shares be located. Just want to point this out. We haven't really talked about how long do they have to locate. In this case, it was 13 days. And then in 2008, SEC changed the rules. Uh, it's making it harder to short a stock without borrowing it first. That didn't help overstock at all. They had to fight for another 13 years after that and then take matters into their own hands. So Overstock's lawyer said, in, said the information in the emails concerns obsolete procedures from six or seven years ago were unlawful at the time, and they're further blocked by the enactment of new federal regulations in 2008. Uh, Overstock, based in Salt Lake, claimed in its lawsuit that large portions of its stock were the subject of naked shorting, leading to instances where the short positions exceeded the supply. We've got to be careful. Yeah, we've got to be careful not to link uh, the locates because we said we couldn't. So this part again, I wanted to show. Like all other prime brokers, the firm regularly receives requests for locates from its clients, and they grant locates where there are reasonable grounds to believe shares will be available by settlement to cover and, and uh, short by the customer. So every prime broker can do this, and the, it's, like we said, they have to believe they can. So it's the prime brokers that are allowing it. So Goldman can do that because they're a prime broker. And they've got to believe that they've got, and they're the ones that say whether it's reasonable. So Goldman Sachs is the is the one that says whether it's reasonable that whether they, they think they can locate it, and they're the ones profiting. Oh, we couldn't, so screw the clients, but we got to knock your stock down. Goldman can't uh, link a specific locate to an. Uh, Goldman Sachs can't link a specific locate to a net fail to deliver position that may occur at the continuous net settlement system, he said in an email. The system is a unit of depository trust and clearing, which provides clearing and settlement equities and other financial instruments. But it is centralized. That is a centralized system. That is a centralized system. And like all centralized systems, the people at the central, uh, near the central powers conspire and help themselves and screw the people at the periphery. If you have systems like the blockchain, the community, everyone gets treated fairly. Everyone gets treated instant. You can't do fails to deliver on people. Overstock went to the, they, they took matters into their own hands. They went to the blockchain. I think Cassava definitely, and all the stocks, all, uh, all the stocks that are getting shorted. Go to the blockchain. You don't need the NASDAQ. Go to the blockchain. Go to the blockchain. If you're, if it, it provides liquidity to be on the NASDAQ, okay, but when you're getting screwed like this, it is not worth it by any stretch at all. Go to the blockchain. And with that, my tendies, friendies, let's go to the phones. Let's go to the phones. Hey, peace of garn. Good to see you, my friend. Looking forward to the topic. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for being here, my friend. Thanks for being in the fight with us. Peace of garn. Fight back against nexus of hedge funds, big pharma, and paid media. They've waged a war against AD patients' rights to an effective AD drug. Effective AD drug. Yeah. Why else would they deny a fair chance for a safe drug? I agree. I'm, I'm, a, I'm hoping maybe The Economist, maybe Winter Media, never heard of them, maybe Bloomberg, maybe the New York Times of all institutions. Maybe. Maybe they can help us. Good morning, Todd. Or good afternoon, Todd. Hey, Wakas is back. Great to see you, my friend. Appreciate your full-time dedication to the savages. Thank you, my friend. Great to have you here. Hello, Keyshawn. Hello, Sava Cohort. Feeling good based on Joe as, uh, as being to us. Great. <laughs> Thank you for being here, my friend. Keep them coming, Johnny. Thanks for being here, my friend. Hello, Sava Cohort. Thanks, Joe, for the great content. My pleasure, my friend. Spasiba for the dedication uh, for Sava and very much enjoying your live streams. I'm really glad to have you here, my friend. Thanks for being here. McMaya, thanks for all you do, Joe. Let's go, Savages. Uh, thanks for being here, my friend. Larry, let's go, Sava. 
Joe, is there a time that the FDA usually releases news like denial of a citizen petition? Saba usually releases news uh, in, in, the, in the AM, right, right before the market opens. I want to make sure I'm uh, by my computer when the news is released. I don't know. My guess is that the FDA would wait till after hours, but I don't know. That's a good, really good question. I'm not really sure. Lorenzo, Saba board hasn't done anything so far either on the judicial front or in the market anti-short front. Do you still think they're doing a good job defending Saba shareholders? Well, like I said, I, I don't blame them for not knowing about the, the attack that would happen to them. It was, we, we as a community figured it out. I, we, like the, 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 button, the mods on the discords and all the individuals that were so helpful. And we all kind of figured out what was happening. I don't blame them for not knowing that stuff. It was such a, the, the, the shorts, with the people that commit crimes against you get to pick the time and the location. And you can't, you can't just spend your entire business life being on the guard of that. He didn't know it was coming. Uh, I, I really hope he looks into that, the, the, the blockchain and the dividend. Uh, I think he's done a great job. I mean, there's, there's, and I think a lot more news is coming and the data is going to win out. So it's, 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 it, it, it's been very, very, very difficult. And uh, I think we're going to hear more from him this year and soon, I think. Dell, glad to see uh, what you do for investing integrity. Awesome work, Joe. Thank you, my friend. Thanks for being here, my friend. Thank you for your help. Daily Mix. Amazing work like always, Joe. Goldman sucks is their new name. <laughs> Goldman sucks. I love that. Ha! Goldman sucks. Ha! How do people not say that all the time? How has that not been their name forever? Did it say he went to <laughs> the City University of New York? Dell, how do they sell shares they don't own? Because they can spy, because they're the ones, because the rules allow them to. The rules allow the prime brokers to decide if, if they can, if you, I wonder if I can borrow. Yes. And so Goldman is the prime broker. Hey, we'll give you a fee to, cause we're, 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 we're a hedge fund that's uh, shorting the heck out of the stock. And uh, we want to, we want to create fake shares. So uh, give us a lot of shorts and then, uh, oh, you know, we know you can't actually locate them. So create, pretend you can, and just uh, give us shares anyway that don't exist, invent them. And we'll give you a fee for that. And Goldman Sachs is paid to do that. And they need to be held accountable. Yeah. Hi, jo Jan, Jan. Any comments on the latest essay article about Saba by Mr. Noctrob? Find it quite detailed and supporting, obviously, highly invested guy. I love Mr. Noctrob. Did a great job exactly on the money. Uh, yes, great. Thank, thank you for bringing that up, Jan. Great job, Mr. Noctrob. Three cheers. Heck yes. I am locked out of uh, Seeking Alpha. Uh, I told you Seeking Alpha is in the bag with the shorts. A lot of their articles, not, not just allowing like fake people like John Castaigne's, and, and nonsense articles we published by like CC, but uh, like their editors, like when there's one, because the, any, anything at all that happens with cassava or anything that doesn't happen is spun into negativity. So they're paid off by the shorts. And I told you that when I submitted my article last year, the best uh, stock of 2021, it sat there for 24 hours and nothing happened with the stock. And then they started editing and I saw the little orange spinning circle, meaning that they were editing it. I looked over the stock price, it immediately shot up 15%. They told the shorts, they're, the seeking alpha is in bed with the shorts. And so they locked me out. They said that uh, on my YouTube channel, when I went through that like 70 minute uh, Department of Justice document for briefly, that there was a, a, two, there was two people had had their contact information, which was public information taken from the internet. But I was I did not mean to put it up there. And, and the reason I, I, we didn't pay any attention to those portions, which is why I missed it. I took everything else out except for that, and I just missed it. And then as soon as I found it, I blurred it as soon as I could. As soon as it was done processing, I blurred it as fast as I could. Same day. And, and, and I don't think anything ever, everybody ever contacted those people or anything like that at all. But Seeking Alpha locked me out of Seeking Alpha. I can't even comment. And, uh, and told me that I need to tell them uh, who made that document. As if that has anything to do with Seeking Alpha at all. They're in bed with the shorts completely. Bruin. Goldman sucks. Yeah. Sucking Alpha. Goldman sucks and sucking Alpha. <laughs> I'm not that. William Humphreys. Oh my God! This is or it is organized crime. It is organized crime. This is organ. Yeah, it, it, it's yeah. There's there's no doubt about it. DOJ, FBI, somebody else said FBI, and then they said, "Here's why the FBI can be a part of this," and they were right. I got to get back and find that now. But yeah, definitely. Peace of Dell. It's called short and is illegal. That's not even the worst part. They practice illegal stuff. Naked shorting, synthetic shares. Google, you will see. Ah. Sherrod, the SEC is either unwilling or incapable of addressing naked short selling and res that results in fails to deliver. Yep. 
My main man, Joe. My main man, Wayne. Great to see you, my friend. Uh, let's go. Let's go, Wayne. Thank you for being here. Wayne is a savage deep in Saba. We are going to win. Oliver. Hey, Joe. Seeking alpha piece today, suggesting only an 11x gain on passing a phase three. 500 uh, price sales. What are your thoughts? Thanks for all that you're doing. Uh, frankly, I gave that article props. I have been, I'm not trying to humble brag. I've just been very, very busy doing two streams. I've been very, very busy. And I really, 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 really appreciate uh, everybody reaching out and contacting me. It's why I can do the show. But it's also, like, I'm not, now I'm like having a hard time getting to everything. So I'm trying to get to everything. And I actually didn't read that article yet. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I, I, you know, I think that's low. So we went through the, the valuation metrics. So I think that's low. But, uh, you know, to each their own. Spasiba. Sherrod, and it, it could be, and I, I don't know anything about this, but it could be that <laughs> it could be that uh, that Mr. Noctrob did different uh, estimations, and the editors wouldn't let him publish it unless he lowered them or something. I don't know. And I told you about the blogs. They've been, they were like, they wouldn't let me link to the YouTube uh, from the comments to the YouTube videos, even if it was relevant to the topic. Okay, I understand that. So I put the, the, the links on the, the Seeking Alpha. So it stayed on Seeking Alpha, and you could watch the video and stay on Seeking Alpha. And they, they would remove those like a hawk. And I looked through their policies. There's, there's, even, the, I, I would, even the videos, I would make no, no call to like buy anything or anything like that. There was nothing they could say. They would still, and they would remove them like a hog, like quick. And then Anthony, not 83, a different Anthony, he just started posting. He's been very active in the comments and just started posting blogs. His blog started getting, like he got more than 3,000 hits. And then they, no blogs unless you're part of the marketplace. No blogs unless you're part of their centralized system. They don't have integrity. They're in with the shorts. Nikolai, spasibo, spasibo, well, spasibo, spasibo, woodka, woodka, spasibo. <laughs> great, to, great to see you, my friend. Thank you for being here. Bio bag holder, whatever happened to Swapnil Agarwal, the billionaire that invested in Saba? Haven't heard from him in a while. I, frankly, that's the first I've been hearing from him at all. I'm not sure. Sherrod. In the best case scenario, the counterfeiter then buys real stock at a fraction of what they sold the counterfeit stock for and deliver the real stock for a buyer. Yeah, best case. Worst case. So what's the worst case? Worst case, they let the transaction get into fail to deliver status and move on to more counterfeiting and selling. Yeah, until they're done. And then, then, then rinse and repeat later. Dell, if exchanges can't properly account for shares traded, wouldn't they be liable along those who trade phantom equities? Well, this stuff is hidden from view. It's not transparent. In, in the blockchain, if they were doing this on the blockchain, you could go, everything would be recorded and immutable forever. So you could go back and see. However, if this was on the blockchain, it would be impossible to do in the first place as we, we, we could check. I won't do it again. But once in a while, we'll keep checking that O-S-T-K-O, -O, the, the fails to deliver on it. There's not even a chart because there's not even a concept on, on the blockchain. You can't do it on the blockchain. So, uh, so wouldn't they be? Wouldn't they be liable? Yeah, but it's never good. Like that, that's like the central powers. That's corrupt. That, that all central sized systems like this are going to have corruption. Goldman's going to conspire with everybody they can and screw people uh, systematically for decades. Jim, thanks for all you do, Joe. I've learned so much. Thanks for being here, my friend. And I'll tell you, I'm loving doing this. <laughs> and just like when I was writing articles, I would always learn so much. Doing these shows, I'm learning a ton, so it's really fun. So it's, I'm, 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 I'm learning right there with everybody, so we're doing this together. It's fun. Bruin, I uh, would have voted for Bloomberg for Prez. Yeah, I might. I mean, I, 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 I might have as well. I lived in Washington, D.C., and when he, I, I, I knew I had a friend there that was uh, the president's, one of the president's photographers, but she was Michael Bloomberg's main photographer in New York, and she used to talk about him all the time. And she just, she loved him. Said he was a wonderful guy. He was not a, not a. Sometimes you hear about famous people and they're really terrible people. Not Michael Bloomberg. Suresh, bag holder Swapnil hasn't gone anywhere. Probably busy with his business. We created a petition on change.org for an investigation into all this. Oh, piece of garn. Thank you so much. Okay, so let me. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll promote. Let me let me check it out and then I'll start promoting it. So thank you so much. We haven't done really a peti like a petition for everybody to sign yet and to get out there to everybody, the Alzheimer's community, everybody. So I want to promote the ever loving stuffing out of it, and uh, and then ask everybody to send it to everybody. So uh, we'll do that starting uh, to tomorrow's show at noon. I'll start. Let me look into it and get all that stuff, and I'll start uh, promoting this the stuffing out. Thank you so much, Peace Cigarn, uh, Daniel. 
plain view and somebody else's wealth uh we'll, 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 we'll give you guys credit thank you so much for doing that good job magnificent have you reached out to rick berry if you can lead an interview with him he's a window into sandy i've not uh thank you somebody else said that i've <laughs> i've not i gotta get on that as well yeah sandy could well, he, could, he could help us yeah and you know, Sandy, it's not like he's on, because he, it's, he is extremely wealthy and he does have so many investments. I'm sure he's got, you know, he's got his, his own uh, firm, but uh, he's not like he's a director. He's a director, I think on three companies only lead director at Salesforce. I think there's one other and Cassava and that's it. Like, so that it, it's not like it's a small thing to him. He's, he's only bothered. He's he like being a director. He's, he's only on three companies. So. Do people from phase two automatically get into phase three? If so, will there, won't there be longer data? No, I don't think so. I, I'm, I'm sure they're in, I, I frankly don't know. So they, I'm, I'm confident the answer is no, but, the, the, but I'm sure they could just then, you know, they, um, they wouldn't preclude or maybe it would. I don't know. Uh, somebody else will have to answer that. Great question. William Humphreys, we must verify everything. Can you verify that he and his story are real? I was skeptical when I read it. Oh, also, sorry to go back to this last one. I should take this back. I think I do have a good answer for you. The people that go into CMS are then offered what is the equivalent of compassionate use for, for doing that. If when, so I believe that if you go into the phase two, you just get offered the drug, I think, and don't have to go into the other trials. I think, I think. Uh, William says that Suresh, we must verify everything. Can you verify that he and his story are real? I was skeptical when I read it. I'm not sure which story you're talking about. Suresh says A-F-A-I-K based on the screenshots. He was real deal. Still don't really know. Rich, Richard says, how about a penalty of double the purchase price of the stock for all failed delivers? Seems like a reasonable rule to create, which would also make it a sting to do that. Hey, a built-in, yeah. You guys, you pay double if you ever fail. The only reason I think, I mean, there's probably the only problem with that is that that, that makes perfect sense and that would work, I'm sure. And then there's probably other rules. There's, if that's that we get back to the fact is they don't want to enforce it. The people at the center are profiting off the people at the periphery. They want to do this. They don't want to clean it up. I think that's a great idea and we should do it. The people at the center don't want great ideas. <laughs> they like ripping people off. Sherrod, naked short selling is much bigger than just Sava. Start a movement. A lot of retail investors don't know about it. Great job. And that is, uh, you're, you hit the nail on the head. As I'm starting to do this show, what is working, what's not working? I was just going to do random whatever is happening in the market stuff. Okay, I'll talk about Cassava. People like Cassava. Okay, I'll talk about Cassava. And now we're getting more into this conspiracy, this organized crime that we're learning about. Now I've got something I want to talk about and that other people want to talk about. So you bet. Well, we're going to stick with Cassava. But as long as until the, and then and the blockchain, the solution is the blockchain. The the the, the criminals at the center are not going to give up their positions. We you got to get just go to a better system. So the, yeah, that's gonna. I think we got the theme of the channel here. Thank you, Todd. Hey all, need more signatures on the petition dashboard. Currently 113. We're gonna blow it the heck up. I'll, starting tomorrow, Todd, I'll blow it the way 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 up or as much as I can. Shared yes. Bell, I wonder if Seeking Alpha is a dating mining operation selling metrics to those like, I, I, I'm sure that they, I mean, they like money. They'll, I'm sure they'll make money any way they can. Venkat Gorapati. Hi, Joe. Uh, you are doing a great service to the Sava community with these videos. Thank you very much. We're doing it together. Uh, I'm really happy to be doing this. Everybody. We're learning a lot, myself included. David H., thanks for what you do, Joe. Thanks for being here, David. Anthony, hey, AD3, my friend, great to see you. Had the chance to speak with Swapnil Agarwal last week. Okay, still Long Sava and Diamond Hand. Extremely busy with some of his real estate closing. Maybe we should have him on the show. That would be great. I, I, I've, I've, I've been out of the loop. I, I don't know who he is. Million four views. Do you think in this current market climate in regards to Omicron, inflation fears, etc., will somewhat hamper a potential run up for cassava? So it's a legitimate question. Like we said, in general, we have to look at what treasuries are doing. So we got to look at the risk free rate. So investing in general, if you sit in treasuries, the US treasuries, the government prints its own money. So it's called risk free, because they're going to pay your money back. So if you if you buy a US Treasury bond, and then okay, so it's okay, so because you get your money back. So it's called risk free. Okay. So when the risk-free rate is high, if you can sit in a bond that has no risk 
and get 10% a year, that's a great rate of return. And everybody's going to do that. And almost nobody's going to buy innovation and innovation stocks are going to get uh, destroyed. However, uh, we're, uh, if you watched another video, I've done so many videos now. In another video, I talked about secular stagnation and we saw the velocity of money. It's, it's the Jay Powell is a lying liar that lies video. We looked at the velocity of money and since the 80s, it's been going down and down and down. Uh, and so the, basically the history of the economy has been explosions of like uh, of, of, of the internet and uh, fake, uh, fake uh, stimulus, like those savings and loans, a thousand savings and loans gave out money they didn't have and the, and the feds made them good. And then there was the housing bubble. There's been all this fake stimulus and then bailouts. And uh, it's basically been without women entering the workforce overnight and doubling the workforce and the industrial revolution and the internet and uh, corporate revolution, MBAs, without that, without those booms, it's a real, it's a real slow economy. So it's possible that the metaverse or artificial intelligence or autonomous driving or something will make the economy blow up and then it'll get too hot and interest rates will rise again. But that's not been happening for like 30 or 40 years. So a lot of people think we're in a permanent secular stagnation, low rate environment that's good for innovation. That was probably more of an answer that you want. But your, your answer is, is yes. If interest rate, well, so Omicron would, would if, if there's, if the economy is bad, that's probably low interest rates. It's so good for innovation and from that respect. So, but, uh, but these are good concerns and, and they do matter. So. Dale, can we talk to the overstock attorney that put a deal together? I want to talk to him. I, I told you, I, I saw, I, I read about him and I liked him. But now that I read about this Patrick Byrne guy, <laughs> I got it. We got to get him on the show. He's like, he's a crusader against these people. He's awesome. Michael, thank you, Joe. Been a great addition to the morning routine. Positivity and knowledge. Thank you, my friend. That's what it is. Positivity and knowledge. Better info, more fun. Thank you. Great to have you here, my friend. Anthony, Joe, for your information, Swap is a billionaire in assets and holds huge amounts of Saba shares. His wife is a PhD in bio. Okay, okay, so now I did know about this person. I didn't know their name. Okay, thank you. Uh, they did solid, dil excuse me, solid due diligence on Kasaba. Hope to hear from them again soon. Terrific. Oh, uh, the, uh, uh, Swap Nil, Mr. We'll say Mr. Swap Nil. Uh, you have an open invitation. Please come on the show. I'd love to talk to you as soon as your time is available. We'll flex for you. Of course, please come on the show. Yawn. Knock tribe estimated before approval 500. Okay. I mean, that's a conservative. I mean, I think that's low, but that still, you know, seems conservative. Can I suggest in your, Dana, hey Dana, how are you? Uh, could I suggest in your YouTube description for each video, leave an executive summary. So people keep saying this to me and I, and it's a great idea. Executive summaries, uh, short, like yeah, so, so summaries and uh, timestamps. And I also got to market them more. And, uh, and Rihanna got to reply to all the comments. And I want, like, they literally, it's not any of that that I don't want to do or that I don't enjoy doing. I love all that. But by the time the next stream comes around, so you're, yeah. So I think uh, if, as this channel gets going, I'll, uh, I, I think maybe I'll, I'll try to get some help. And that's the first thing we'll do is do little summaries. Because I agree, they're so long. And, and you'd have, you basically have to watch the whole thing to figure out what's in it. So uh, I, I agree. So, so maybe when I get some help, uh, we'll, we'll start doing summaries and timestamps and uh, more marketing and, uh, and better deal in the comments and, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, Lorenzo Pons, the fact the SEC or regulators don't punish heavily naked shorts will ultimately hurt the U.S. market by driving away potential investors demoralized by the lack of trust in U.S. institutions. Completely. I, I just completely agree. Completely. Well said, Lorenzo. La Holly 100, you spend so much time going through these documents. Great job. It's this, you know what, it's, it's really interesting to me and it's really fun. But the fact that I can then share it with everybody makes it really, 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 really fun. Like I find this stuff interesting and, and I, I, maybe I'll do this on my own, but then I don't have anybody to talk to about it and stuff. But, so this is fun. I, the, the, to, to, to find interesting stuff like these documents and to share with everybody, I, let's keep doing that. I love doing this. Spasiba! Bruin! 83, uh, that would be Blockbuster. Get Swap Null on here? Absolutely. Sucking Alpha. <laughs> How do we sign the petition? Uh, Todd or uh, so so Todd Gates, uh, Daniel. I'm, I'm so I'm so sorry. I'm not getting anybody's names. Uh, 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 Daniel Plainview and and now now know the other one. Uh, please uh, 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 please, I'll, I'll start I'll start promoting the crap out of it tomorrow. That will make that a, a focus for tomorrow's show. 
Eugene, uh, top of the morning, Joe, and great to see you always for your dedication. Uh, thank you, my friend, for exposing these shorts and their evil deeds. You got it right. They're evil and they fear no reprisal. And if we don't do something, there's not, uh, if we will do something, including taking matters into our own hands. Want to do that dividend and just get on the blockchain in general. Magnificent. Patrick Byrne is awesome and he has great connections in politics and highest echelons of security agents like NSA and stuff. He was one, I, I had no idea about this guy. I started looking into him and it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He was interesting. <laughs> so I, I immediately he's like, wow, this guy, we're going to, yeah. So I think I'm going to try to get him on the show. Like not just, you know, hey, you want to come on, but, but, but uh, really, you know, to be, uh, to do, maybe do a whole show about him and, and then and see if I can then come on, get him to come on or something like that. So uh, please, if you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends that spread the word. Their centralized powers don't care. We can't, it's probably, it's probably not the best. It's a, it's a good idea to, to try to get help from all the centralized powers, but they're not going to rescue us. We have to rescue ourselves. We have to spread the word of the community and get the pressure on elected officials, centralized powers, the petitions, uh, the DOJ, the FBI, uh, all, all this, the petitions to, to the, the FDA, all that stuff. Uh, so, and we're getting a few more comments here. So spread the word is what was what we're saying. Spread, spread send this video around, please, and uh, check out the des the description. Uh, sign up for the sign up for the small caps newsletter. Uh, we're gonna do two uh, two small caps this month. We did Art Vivant and Inhibit Case last month. We'll do two, and we're gonna stick with them forever, uh, but we're gonna and we'll keep covering them. Uh, but we'll do we'll do two more this uh, month as well. So sign up for that, and then. So a uh, link will be added to the comments. Great. So if you want to so sign up for that petition, we'll really promote it tomorrow and tell you what it's all about. So sorry, I haven't, I haven't been able to put time into it. Uh, we'll tell you all about it. So tomorrow at noon, we'll do that. Sign up for that petition. Todd will put it in the comments here. We'll, we'll, we'll blow it up tomorrow. We'll talk all about it tomorrow. Uh, and uh, Brian says, nothing to add. Just want to say thanks, Joe, for turning me on to Salvador a year ago. Brian, way to go a year ago. Well done, my friend. Good job, Brian. And Todd... The fact that SA has given an ultimatum says the live stream is interrupting the game. I agree. I love that getting the, and that, that happened exactly when Adam Firstine got his feathers ruffled. And so we got their attention. We got their attention. That was great. Yeah. Dana, thank you again for committing so much time yours. Before you hire a professional team, maybe you make a call to any of us, volunteer someone uh, to give you a hand or two. That would be totally awesome. That would be really awesome. I mean, when it comes to summaries and time codes, somebody can do that in a comment and I can pin that comment to the top. We could just do that. I'm very happy to pin that to the top if people want to do that for sure. Good. That's a, thank you, Dana. Thank you. So if the community wants to do that, please. Greg, uh, Sava holding support so far. Retail traders just need to not panic sells. Shorts playing uh, psyops trying to create retail panic selling. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's exactly right, Greg. They're playing psychological games. Yep, that's exactly right. And, we, and now we know their game plan, though. And they're not bright enough to think on the move. They, they, once, once you know their game plan, they don't have another one. They, they, they create their own reality based on nothing. You just, you just keep, on, keep on poking at the foundations of the reality because it has, it has no legs to stand on. And ours is real reality. We have data and facts on our side. Yeah. Rocco, how do you explain SA even allowing yesterday's promising write-up, given they seem to be moving with the shorts? So um, I, I think they're, what they say is we are completely neutral. And so they are, they're most, they're kind of neutral, but they can be bought is what they are. And then cassava happens to be one that the shorts have decided the shorts and the uh, competitors and the p potential partners have decided to, to focus on. So I think they are, I think they are neutral that they just don't care. They care about money and I'm not blaming them for that, but I, th I think they are neutral and then they can be bought when they, when for money. So I think they are, I think they have to appear neutral and just can't be completely in the bag is what I think. Sepridio Cortellus, yo, Joe, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the article on sucking alpha from yesterday. Submit from that occurrence of area 0%. Oh, so Anthony, a different, not Anthony 3, the other Anthony, he, he said he was writing that article. I, I think that was Anthony that did that or somebody else did that too. Um, thank you so much. Great article. Again, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I wish I had more time because Anthony's been sending me that stuff and I've been, I've been trying to check it out. I've just been going from thing to thing so fast. I didn't actually get the chance to read that one yet either. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, brilliant. So Biogen is, yeah, area in 69%. Yeah, or, or I guess it was 41 in, in, in edema and 69% and in area. God. So, uh, yeah, thank, and, and <laughs> Simiflim. Simiflim makes less side effects than placebo. <laughs> so 
great to point out. Thank you. Enjoyed as always. Rainer, enjoyed having you here as always, my friend. Thank you. Keep up the momentum going. Thank you for all the work you're doing. I will, my friend. Thanks very much. Uh, Spasiba. Great job with the show. If you need any help, just reach out. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate it. Thanks very much, my friend. Vaztec. Spasiba. All right, my friends. Great to see you. I will, I'll do another show later today and then noon tomorrow. See you later.